I met a nine-year-old little leaguer named Zach. Now known to his friends by his age nine and his number 16, Zach lived a happy life. Suddenly there was fatigue. How long would his cold last? Zach was sick. He was in our hospital. Lots of doctors came to visit. He would look with a puzzled expression as they checked on him ever so carefully. What was going on? Inspired by the example of our Sidekicks program where medical students befriend a patient in need, I came to know Zach and his parents. When the moments were dark, the text messages would come. When he needed a visit, I'd sneak a moment or two to say hello. A short visit when his bone marrow was to be aspirated, long nights, high fevers, dashed hopes. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Zach muscled through the treatments, the antibiotics, and his transplant. Breaking news. Unless something crazy happens, he's going home on Thursday. All of us in our time have to be about building our own future. Not leaving that to chance, not leaving that to hope alone, but adding the hard work to our vision to make that future real. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but the world will remember what we do here. We occupy today the finest medical education and research facility in American medicine. In this new signature building and in our care settings, if we reach out our hands to others, through collaboration, we can advance teaching and science. In our academic medical center, together, we can offer patient-centered care where the emotions of our hearts and the intentions of our minds can guide the work of our hands. Hand in hand, imagine the power captured therein to teach, to investigate, to motivate, and to care for others. Together, hand in hand, we can change the course of history of disease and the practice of medicine. When I was 13 years old, I was diagnosed with a brain tumor. I was playing hockey and I was hit. And in the follow-up, they did an MRI and I had received a concussion, but the MRI also showed a brain tumor. Going through the process of the diagnosis and then the surgery afterwards to remove the tumor um, kind of gave me an insight into my first experience in the medical field. I've always been part of a team, and I think that this will be something that um, will allow me to be part of a team that really gets to, on a daily basis, you know, help provide a better outcome for our patients. If we are stronger and more whole as persons, then what we can bring to our patients is richer and more complete. We continue to attract outstanding students whose accomplishments bring us tremendous pride. We celebrate the great gift that is our faculty. Our staff throughout the institution leads by their example. Our campus community is an important component of a great university where collaboration has become the standard. We're centered in a region that respects what we do and supports us in our efforts to chart a bright future. My name is Daryl Blaney. I am a cancer survivor and I am a fourth year medical student at the University of Massachusetts Medical School. When I was uh, three, almost four, I actually started out having a, a fever that wouldn't break and when I started limping around the house with an unbreakable fever, my parents decided it was probably time to take me to the doctor. When I arrived at, uh, at UMass, they did some additional uh, tests, including a bone marrow aspiration, and found that I did have uh, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's been, wow, 22 years since I came off chemo 
and, and I have been 100% disease free. When I decided to apply to medical school, the University of Massachusetts Medical School was my number one choice. I'd actually drive by it on Route 9 and just kind of stare longingly up into the neon blue sign being like, oh wow, how awesome would it be to go to the place that I credit with saving my life. The discoveries of our faculty have captured the attention of the world. A Massachusetts doctor is part of an exciting new case that could be a big breakthrough in the battle against HIV. Local researchers worked on what they're calling a functional cure for a little girl. Doctors at UMass Medical School are speaking out after news of a potential finding for cure for HIV in children. The little girl, two and a half now, was born in Mississippi HIV positive because her mom had not received prenatal care. On her second day of life, a doctor decided to give her a strong cocktail of three separate drugs including one that was developed right here at UMass Medical School. Researchers at UMass Medical School have discovered an off switch of the extra chromosome that causes Down syndrome, and experts are calling it a landmark finding. We're able to basically silence the expression of genes across the chromosome, so a couple hundred genes or more are all treated at once by insertion of a single gene. New Hope scientists may one day eliminate Down syndrome. In isolated cells, researchers based at UMass were able to silence the extra chromosome that causes the genetic condition. It's fabulous. Susanna Payton's son Graham has Down syndrome, now 26 years old and the oldest of four children. Susanna is hopeful this research may someday address diseases often connected with the syndrome, like heart disease. An unexpected nightmare, postpartum depression, almost ruining what should be one of life's most joyful times. But now there's new research, and it's taking aim at stopping the illness right in its tracks using a simple brain imaging to identify those most at risk. With two daughters under two years old, Nicole Caligiri has her hands full. While pregnant with baby number two, Nicole jumped at the chance to take part in groundbreaking research at UMass Medical School in Worcester, using MRI scans and blood tests to identify those most at risk before symptoms start. When a child with an animal bite in Mumbai is enrolled in an MBL research trial, evaluating our monoclonal antibody, or a family from a rural village in Liberia seeks out one of our practitioners who have traveled to serve their needs, they come to know UMass. When a disabled child is cared for by our colleagues at Commonwealth Medicine, or a survivor is rescued by the Life Flight team, they are reassured that UMass is there for them. Just over two years ago, in a meeting I shall never forget, Governor Salucci came to my office, accompanied by his most stalwart supporter, Jan. They came to tell me that soon he was to make the announcement that he had been diagnosed with ALS. As I went to grasp his hand, it was clear that it had been weakened by disease. But there was not one sign of weakness in the strength of his character or his commitment to public service. We are inspired by the governor's commitment to tomorrow's patients and his willingness to invest his time and energy, which became more precious each and every day. We shall carry forth in the important cause of medical research in response to his call to bring hope as we care for and about others in their time of greatest need. Dr. Brown will not rest. He wants to find a cure, and I am so proud to be helping him so that he can continue his groundbreaking research that is giving realistic hope to people living with ALS and their families. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. God bless you, and God bless the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Thank you.
throughout the world and close to home, we are UMass. Dignified and determined, principled and purposeful, respected and relied upon. We were actually having a pretty easy day. And then... They rushed out into danger to tend to the wounded. I sat down with Dr. Christina Hernan, an emergency room physician from UMass. She's just one of the heroic doctors and nurses who ran out to help. It felt like everybody was my patient. Every single patient there, as vulnerable and injured as they were, had at their side a doctor or a nurse or a medical student or an athletic training student, all these volunteers who wanted to be nowhere else other than at the side of that injured, vulnerable patient. On behalf of all of those for whom you cared, we know you brought comfort. On behalf of all of those who call you colleague, we know you brought us pride. Why am I optimistic about our future? Pure and simple, I must be. We must be. Ours is a most important calling. Ours is an enormous privilege as we care for and about others. When we do what we do best, many times there's a very happy ending. Please recognize how important you are to those for whom we care. As a nurse, in the laboratory, or during a clinic or on a ward, together we can shape the future of medicine. For Zach's sake, and for so many others, we must. It is supposed to be this way.